So, yes, so I have changed the title of the talk a little bit from what was advertised because I'm really good at planning everything last minute and uh, I actually sat down and did my talk quite recently and I'm like, oh, can I change it? I just kind of want to talk a little bit more about that. talking primarily about DevOps, but it connects to AWS, it connects to Azure or any cloud services quite well. Um, but first, if I could see all the slides now. My introduction to me. Sarah has done a good job of doing that. But yes, I'm senior tech lead at Switchblade. I've worked with numerous clients, kind of from small startups to pretty big multinational enterprises. Um, and our main focus really has been to help them make the most of their tech, to bring tech into their business in whichever way. I think a few of them have spoken today and it's been quite rewarding to hear people talk about the stuff you've built. Um, also I have an involvement with Chalk, so Chalk is a kind of overhead, I guess, branch that ran the event today. Um, I'm chairing the Chalk Connect Coding Club you're not familiar with it because we haven't advertised it for time. Um, first Thursday of every week, we're going to be running a coding club slash digital event that everybody can come. They can run, write codes themselves, or they can come be a designer, work on AI, whatever. There's going to be a bunch of industry professionals there. It's going to be great to learn new things. But what am I going to talk about in my talk? Well, it's just going to be a casual talk. I do encourage people to points across or if there's anything you need to ask. Um, I'm just going to kind of tell a few stories about how I've seen DevOps implemented and how I've seen companies really need to run DevOps. And also, um, I'm just going to give a bit of info on what it is. So without further ado, all right. let me tell you the boring, bland definition of what DevOps is. The main focus of DevOps is, or the main definition of DevOps, is kind of hotly contested because it's one of those things where if you're in the tech industry, people love to latch onto a buzzword and then it gets morphed into all sorts of things. It's like, oh, check out your DevOps tools, check out this, check out that. But DevOps generally is a set of practices very similar to Agile. If anyone showed up to the Agile talk earlier today, obviously today, the event was today. Um, DevOps and Agile work quite well together. Um, but the main definition and the main focus of DevOps is it's a set of practices that you can use to automate and integrate the processes of your software dev team and your software operations team. DevOps. It really is that simple. Until you involve the Ouroboros of DevOps, which I have on the screen here, it shows the overlap between the dev team and the operations team. So you as an, or the instruction comes from up high from the dev team, uh, from the operations team. Hey, we need this feature. You as a developer, your focus is to find the work, create the work, and package it up and say, hey, here's a nice unit of work. Here it is, operations team. And their responsibility from there is to release it to whichever users care the most about the feature. So if the feature that you've worked on as a developer is just a really small bug fix, then the release is like, let's get this out to as many people as possible. It's a bug, let's fix it. But some releases, you know, with a, you may have seen like, your Spotify app looks different to everybody else's often because they love A-B testing. Um, it may just be released to a subsection of the audience, then monitored and tested for both bugs and for user engagement, really. Um, so following that loop as a business and also as a development team is kind of the core focus of DevOps. Um, but it's worth noting, not just at all, even though a lot of things are sold as DevOps tools, it really is a shift in your mindset. So I personally have really just kind of subscribed to the cult of DevOps. <laughs> I have a home server at home that I run DevOps practices on. It's like, once you're kind of in it, it really does help deliver the things that matter. And you're like, oh, why am I not just doing this at home? It's just me and my wife, just with a home server. <laughs> Um, and I guess I kind of compare it to an assembly line. So Agile does the same thing where it's like your main focus is to get feature requests in, uh, work out 
and then have it tested with feedback come back from the user. DevOps does very similar stuff, but its core focus is within your dev team and your operations team. And moving on, I'm gonna tell a little story. The screen test. This is an infamous story in the industry. It's, I think, the old sentence is basically we just unplug things and see who screams. Um, the story starts with a fairly big company. The company has just moved to go remote because COVID has just hit. And so everybody's working from home on a really last second notice. They're all connecting into the VPN, which the VPN is great. We've got the industry, we've got the um, corporate VPN, we get all of our emails, we save all of our files to the local server. It's fantastic. Then people start, uh, people start coming in, you've got the cleanup um, and maintenance crew. People really left on a whim here. They've left their PCs on, they've left their monitors on. Oh, there's a PC in the corner. Let me just shut that off. You know, I'm just going to shut everything off. Let's say power. And if people scream, I can just power it back on, right? Um, several servers shut off later, and there are no screams because it's kind of it's complete silence. I haven't been getting emails from my team recently. And the files haven't really been saved. And you just have people at home like, I can't connect to the corporate VPN. It's absolutely lost. Um, and oh, now, why did you do that to me? Am I back? And yes, so chaos and choose <coughs> as the business, and it takes them a little while to figure it out because there's no monitoring, etc. And so the the outcome of, of the story from this business is that they took on DevOps practices. They said, oh. We need monitoring to find out when the corporate VPN is down so we can have alarms. We need documentation to see which servers actually matter and who owns the server so that I can actually call people up. And um, what was the other thing they did? Oh, no, they, yeah, they run those two main things and that helped them take their business from not using DevOps at all, having kind of chaos in, in that transition. To, um, oh, to, to coming back online much faster. You know, why am I telling you the story? It's not because it's an isolated incident, but poor communication and lack of shared responsibility across the team can and often do like, lead to disastrous situations like this. You know, you don't have to be a team full of developers to know, oh, I don't actually know how this thing works. This is a mysterious black box in the corner of the room. I just really just don't touch it. Um, and so, Using the screen test as a cautionary tale, I wanted to just move on to reasons why DevOps is, why it matters for a company. So there's kind of a few problems that I've listed on the side, and then solutions that come out of that. So uh, something that you may have interacted with, with a developer team or maybe a product that you use, is you've reported an issue and you said, hey, there's a bug in the app that I'm using, it's just not working, and they say, great, we've received your bug and we'll solve it and release it as soon as the fix is available. Two months later, your tiny bug gets fixed, and you're like, okay, well that's great, I'm glad you released a bunch of new features, but I just needed my bug fixed. Continuous integration is a practice within DevOps where your core focus is taking features and releasing them in a certain way or into a certain core subsidiary of your audience, and then making sure the bugs constantly are getting released and fixed. So I, you, yeah, so we use DevOps internally to focus on making the releases that matter to the users. So we can push out a really quick release saying, yes, we fixed this bug, this bug, this bug, but in the interim, we're still working on massive feature B. Um, so some companies sometimes have six month turnarounds for new updates, something like continuous integration and this DevOps practice really helps solve that. <clears throat> really helps solve that. Um, jumping onto phantom errors in user reports, this is something that we've had to deal with quite a bit often too. We have somebody 3 a.m. on Safari, the bug occurs, and they're like, I just I cannot use my install. I'm like, okay, but I didn't realize you're using like an iPhone 7. We don't have remotely good enough monitoring for this. And we just have user reports stacking up of problems that we can't necessarily solve because users don't often get you the information that you need. 
focusing on monitoring and having a centralized monitoring space where you can see, hey, this is what my users are seeing, this is what my servers are seeing, and this is what my customers are reporting, is a really important practice to follow through DevOps to help you jump and solve the errors before users report them very often. <clears throat> Other things, you want to keep people on track and uh, you want to keep people on the same page and keep track of your servers and services. So as your company gets bigger, what tends to happen, especially with a Netflix sized business, is you'll have microservices architecture. So you'll have a database here, a server running here, or maybe if you're a smaller business, you might have a Microsoft solution here, you might have a Google Docs solution here, and you just have solutions kind of all over the place. Following DevOps practices, using infrastructure's code, or maybe your automated deployments or documentation, help bring everything into one space and bring shared ownership. So I like to use the example of um, people having, oh yeah, it's in a spreadsheet, where's that? Oh, it's on the Google Drive, or I have a spreadsheet, oh, it's on my local computer where only I can see it. That very same thing happens with servers all the time. And they don't have to be real servers, they can be on the cloud, they can be anywhere. So DevOps tools such as infrastructure as code or your automated deployments really help solve that. <coughs> so next, I wanted to move on to a story, another, another story. This story is about the tale of two companies that we've worked for. Um, I'm just going to call them company A and company B to protect the not so innocent. Um, some of them might be at the conference today, so I think it just to keep their name anonymized. Um, both companies had very similar infrastructure, and they kind of outgrown their original dev team. So they, kept, they came to us and said, hey, we want you to take over the infrastructure that we have, and we'd like you long term to work on top of it, or just help us out. And so I've had quite close hand, uh, I've had quite a close relationship with both. Company A, being the absolute dream client, you know, they handed us over comprehensive, comprehensive documentation, they had a well-organized infrastructure, and they even gave us a list of phone numbers to say, hey, got problems, contact these people. Fantastic. Company B, on the other hand, took the metaphorical skeleton key and said, hey, here's access to our server, here's access to our AWS. Thank you, if you've got any documentation for me, is there anything that I can you know, maybe use to, to see what's going on here? Like, no, our developer didn't really give us any of that, so here's a pair of logging credentials and you know, we'll catch you up in, in a month's time after you've taken a look. And it's not the best, you know. Working for company B can often feel like you're playing a bit of Minesweeper. What happens if I make a change to this feature? Or what happens if, you know, I delete this file that seems fairly innocuous? Something may well explode. You don't, you don't have enough documentation or enough visibility to, to solve that. You know, to this day, we found a few neglected databases because if anybody's used AWS, it is a kind of a matrix of regions like, oh, I've never checked out Virginia for their server infrastructure. Turns out there's been one running this whole time. No one's been using it. It's been costing them ten dollars a month. Just fully wasted budget. Company A on the company A on the other hand, I'm much more happy about. You know, we were able to get the ground running with them. The DevOps practices that they already had in place meant that we could focus on what we did best. You know, we scaled up the systems. We helped fix bugs that we didn't even introduce. Fantastic, right? It's the best thing that you can do is take your infrastructure, give them to people, and they're like, great, we can run with that, rather than, sorry, we're going to have to rebuild it. Obviously, it's important to note that the difference here isn't necessarily in the complexity of their systems, because both systems are roughly equally as complex as one another. It's just their approach in managing them, you know, using DevOps practices and investing, them, investing in them as a strategy, not just using them as a set of tools, allows <clears throat> pay dividends when we came along and wanted to continue working on it. Or maybe you hire a new piece of a uh, new member of the team. <laughs> I don't know where that was going. You hire a new member of your team and you say, hey, get to work on our engin um, engineering infrastructure. And they go, what? Where is everything? You know, these tools are super important, I would say. Um, I guess, yeah, the key takeaway is obviously they're not company A. Company A isn't necessarily better. But as a result, they're more resilient, adaptable, and agile because of their initial commitment to using DevOps. Um, company 
day on the other hand, you know, kind of went into how my technical debt, you just kind of have the ever present risk of what happens if I bring something down? Or maybe we just need to spend the time rebuilding everything. If after a certain amount of time, because you know both had infrastructure spanning several years, it, it builds up. So jumping on to actionable advice. What can you actually do to make use of DevOps in your business? So obviously I kind of wasn't sure how many people would be business owners in the audience or how many people would just be um, people looking to do it in their careers. So I'm going to focus on both. Um, first thing, you may have heard talks obviously about agile processes. I would say both work hand in hand. You know, if you're looking to implement agile processes in your business and you say, oh, what can I take from DevOps and what can I take from Agile? How can these two work together for me so that I can take the best of all of them? Because everybody's business is unique and everybody's situation is unique. So pluck the best that you can from both of them. But if you're looking to start, just take a look at your current infrastructure. Say, hey, what, what do I do as a developer or as a, just a human being in the, in the business that takes me a couple hours to do? And it's only me that can do it. Can we, can we automate this? Can I get a robot to do it? You can also try just starting to monitor everything. One of the key things that we noticed when we started making use of DevOps in our tech infrastructure was, I don't know what I don't know. You know it's like, our servers are running, it's going great, but are they stressed? Are they doing great? You don't know until you figure out via monitoring. And through monitoring, you can also just data back decisions, you can say, oh, we noticed that we're spending a lot of time on this, or maybe we're spending way too much for our servers here. And then the final thing is obviously just spot the bottlenecks. You know, what actually, if all of my developers or if all of the members of the team are contributing to our shared, our shared vision, and then it goes through a single human being, and that single human being is extremely stressed, then they're a bottleneck. Or what happens if my feature comes in then another, then a bug fix, and all of them once again have to go through a single person doing quality checking or something similar. How do I avoid those bottlenecks using DevOps? <clears throat> there are some great immediate benefits from doing so as well. It makes it a lot easier to onboard new staff. So one of the kind of key takeaways that I've noticed of the talks today is that it's a pain to get new staff, and it's even harder to get those staff so using practices such as this, having extensive documentation, telling, being able to tell a new member of the team, hey, this is how we run, you can get started very, very quickly, means that you get more benefit over the staff that you do hire more quickly. And they're a little less irritated <laughs> to be trained, and it helps also just kind of reduce staff churn, because you know, no one wants to work in a chaotic environment when you don't actually know what's going on. Um, Yes, I think just a key, a key closing remark for, for action is, is um, similar to Agile, implementing DevOps practices in your business isn't just making use of a set of tools or hiring a new member of staff. It's a strategic change. You have to change your culture, you have to plan, you have to make investments. But I would say that it's been really rewarding for us and it's been really rewarding for the clients that we work for. But what about you? How can you personally benefit from understanding DevOps? Right now in Eastbourne, I would, and probably I would say the whole country, you know, the tech industry is thriving, and DevOps are also in really high demand. Um, skill sets are really important. You know, if you're a developer or you're an operations expert, the industry is looking for people who can wear multiple hats. You getting into DevOps or having a, even a loose understanding of DevOps can really help you. Um, be upskilled. You know? um, if you're in development, learning and learning about operational and how does my how does my software reach the real world? And what do I do once it reaches the real world? Having an understanding of that can make you really valuable. And if you're in operations, just learning coding and learning the way that code makes it to you and how it's packaged, etc. It can just it can make you indispensable. Um, I guess that for some real world examples. Let's say maybe right now you're a small developer in a, in a tech startup. If you learn and implement DevOps practices,
sit into your business. It can make you a linchpin of your team. You know, you're deploying software much faster than you were before, and it makes you look a lot better. Um, or maybe you're just a, develop, a developer with personal projects. You know, having a GitHub with Terraform and Ansible examples, um, making use of digital learning, etc., can really make you stand apart from the crowd if you're doing recruitment or you're going for an interview. Um, I found this really helped with networking because when you actually go and meet somebody who's not just a developer and you're a developer looking to get a new job, you can talk to people in companies who you wouldn't have been able to talk to before. You can talk about operations, you can talk about you can talk about the user experience, you can talk about data analysis, etc. Things that the people the people you're talking to may not know about your coding and you may not have previously known about their operations knowledge. But now you have that, and you can take that to networking meetings. Simply put, um, adding DevOps to your skill set just it just kind of makes you more marketable. Um, it broadens your appeal to potential employers and sets you apart in this fairly crowded job market. Um, what is my next slide? It's another story. <laughs> One more story to close everything out. This story is about scaling for Black Friday. Um, it's a familiar scene. You know, you've probably used Ticketmaster or maybe you visited a website during a big sale and the whole thing's gone down. We've been working with the company for a while. I'm going to call them Company C. I'm just going to continue that day. Um, they're a seller of higher end digital products, and as a business who sells higher end digital products, you find that Black Friday, or they were finding that Black Friday was quickly becoming one of their better sales days because people didn't want to necessarily buy their digital products on release day or for the full price, and so when they knocked money off the tag, people started coming. And of course, as a result of that, the website started going down. And it didn't just go down, it went down for a long time and lost them a fair bit of money. You know, you don't just necessarily lose money, you lose customer trust. They had to solve the problem, <laughs> they were trying to spin up new servers, but the tech wasn't necessarily ready for that. They were calling up AWS and saying, hey, can you take our server and just, just make it bigger? And they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. It's going to take us a day, uh, an hour. It's going to take us maybe two hours. If there are people hitting the website right now, it would be really useful if you could just fix that today. And so as a result, we were getting into DevOps at the time, and we said, hey, that's great. Let's use some of the DevOps tools that we've been using on your business, and what can we do? So it started out introducing monitoring, it's like, sure, I as a marketer of the company know that we get a certain number of million hits on a given day, but how tired is the server as a result of that, or how tired is my infrastructure now that this many people have accessed it? Well, monitoring really helped. They also introduced automation tools, so deploying the website went from, oh, sorry, I can only run on this one server, to can run pretty much anywhere, and there's a load balance on top of it, it's a whole architectural change, but the benefit from having that is they were able to monitor when traffic was low and kill off servers, and they were able to monitor when traffic was high and just bring them in automatically. They didn't have to have the guy you know, with the bucket just flooding, getting rid of the floods, taking all of the traffic and just putting it elsewhere with a new server that they were spinning up. Um, and everything just kind of happened automatically. Black Friday rolls around again, and they had their best selling day, uh, I think in the history of the company. It was like, yeah, it was their best sales day. They were able to deal with all of the traffic without really breaking a sweat. No one even had to sit there. Well, we were sitting there extremely stressed, but <coughs> we didn't need to be because the servers were able to spin up. And more importantly, when Black Friday finished, spin back down again, <laughs> so you're not paying for a huge architecture. Um, when everything went back down, so obviously, it's not just it's not just a nice story to tell. It's a it's a lesson that we learned. DevOps really for them especially it didn't just solve their problems. It helped open new doors. They're able to have significantly bigger days. Previously, the ship, the servers would even shut down overnight because they were getting less traffic, and then they started getting traffic from America, and now they're running at all times. But it, it was fantastic, and yeah, it was the difference really between them having a record-breaking sales day and just another IT nightmare. But anyway, with that, I'm wrapping up my talk.
There it is. <laughs> You've taken at least a few things away. Um, the key points I just wanted to mention are just on the board. You know, DevOps isn't just a set of tools. It's a culture. It's a strategic change that you can introduce to your business. It's also an integral component of today's software dev. So if you are a software developer looking to get into the industry, you know, take a look around. What can Terraform, what can Ansible do for you? Um, and yeah, that's kind of all I have. Um, I already broached it at the beginning of the talk, but Chalk Connect has their coding club. If you want to come over, it's, it's um, Foundry in Eastbourne. First Thursday of every week, month. Because there are only one Thursday a week anyway. Um, and that's in the beacon. I don't know what time it's from, Sarah. Do you remember? Um, I think we're thinking about doing it from seven. Yes, so bring your laptop, bring whatever project you're working on, come be with industry professionals and be with, with newbies and just kind of mingle and help learn new things. Um, we're so obviously on the Chalk newsletter and we're in the process of setting up the Chalk Discord and other ways to get involved.